Hello everyone and welcome back to another kind of walkthrough of a uh, deck I've been playing a lot online and, and most recently uh, Taya's uh, The Pack, you know, $2,000 Pixelborn event. Uh, this is Order 66. Uh, 66 because there's 66 cards in the deck and it's mostly a, a joke. I know it's not optimal. That's pretty obvious to say uh, as far as deck construction goes that I know it's not optimal. I'm not you know, blind to that. But um, it's a deck I enjoyed, uh, Steel Song, you know, a very classic take on, on what we've seen since set one of uh, of Lurkana here. And so I'm to go through some of the cards, some of the card choices, what I think you can maybe cut and shave down on, what I think is really good and you shouldn't move with, and uh, play some games. So let's get right into it. Um, first, to kind of focus on some of the cards here, we have the Queen, Cinderella, and Robin Hood, all one-cost characters, which are... Uh, Robin Hood and the Queen are, are things that you can shift on to maybe get out of early Whole New World. Cinderella lets you sing some of the more busted three-cost songs, let the Stormy John and Strength of the Raging Fire, as well as having Cinderella stout-hearted here to help uh, kind of end the game and be a really you know prevalent threat against a lot of the top decks in the format here that's hard to kill. Uh, moving along, we have Lantern. I'm a Lantern enjoyer. I prefer it significantly to Sleepy's Flute. I don't think in any matchup I'd rather have Sleepy's Flute, flute rather than Lantern, even against, you know, Ruby Sapphire, even against Red Purple, like all those things, I'd still rather have Lanterns. Uh, just getting ahead, letting you stick a beast early before they can remove it with a Medusa is one of the important factors in that, and being able to deploy two threats a turn late in the game or in the mid-game, whether it be, you know, an Ariel and a Beast or Robin Hood or anything like that, or even a Surfer Stitch uh, to get ahead, I'd always have, rather have Lantern. Ariel, kind of a staple for the song variants there, finding songs, uh, Bare Necessities being a more recent inclusion. Obviously, from the newest set into the Inklands, letting you take a either be prepared, you know, maybe a tough to deal with location, a, you know, fishbone quill, anything like that from their hand to kind of mess with their hand a bit and progress your game plan. Very good inclusion. Uh, we have, of course, Robin Hood and the Queen. Things to shift onto to sing some of our big songs. And we have Stitch, Carefree Surfer. Good, you know, late game threat helps you make use of some of your earlier cost cards that sometimes will have a lot of value in the late turns of the game. Um, Draws cards, huge body, hard to kill. It's a great card. Uh, Benja, uh, way to deal with you know some of the more prevalent items in this format, whether it be a mirror match, whether playing lanterns, uh, fishbone quill that got out of you know didn't quite get pulled from the hand with bare necessities, or late game cards uh, like Lucky Dime or even Maui's Fishhook, which could be problematic. Uh, the removal suite, both Storm Rage on, Strength the Raging Fire, then along came Zooth and Grab Your Sword. All have different variations of, of dealing with different types of characters. Three of each, because it's kind of a smattering of things, and I didn't really know which one was best. I think that I like the three split action on all three of them, or all, all four of them. I don't think it's incorrect to only place three of certain ones, because the uninkable will count, and in some matchups, they're just not real cards. And you'll have ways to make use of dead cards in your hand as, as good as maybe a deck with Fishbone Quill would, or a deck that can draw, then discard maybe with a small tank, um, or anything like that. So... I like the split. I'll stand with it for now. A whole new world, one of the key cards in the, the format and in the deck, you know, being able to refill your hand and getting ahead is what this deck's all about. Being efficient with its cards is, is, a, is a great way to, to to win games. And yeah, not really much else to say with that. Tragic Hero, Beast, he's a pretty good card draw engine paired with Lantern, gets ahead of Medusa to where it's hard to kill even when going second. Get at least a card out of it. Robin Hood, of course, a shifter. Tinkerbell, it's great at challenging, uh, you know, wide boards to help dealing with cursed merfolk and the like and cinderella of course rounding everything out so that's the just the deck going forward i don't really know what i would take out you could shave some members of the queen maybe you don't play carefree server stitch maybe you don't play three zeus and three grab your sword maybe you cut one of those two maybe you i don't know you can do a bunch of things to maybe make room to go down to 60 cards but i didn't figure out what i wanted to do before the event and in all honesty i didn't really you know, have the biggest desire to play on the second day. I wanted to see how the best of two format was being played, or the tomb game set, I like to call it. And I had plans on Sunday for Easter, so if I didn't do well, I'd be like, yeah, well, you know, I had plans anyway. So it just turned out that I was able to keep those plans and play the event in their house, which was nice, and won anyway. So that was all convenient, and up on cards, you know, beyond 60 isn't correct, I'll say. It's not, but it is not as bad as people make it out to be, so dive right in here i'm probably going to do this all in one video uh it's going to be a couple best of ones let's just play some some ranked here and uh as you can see i didn't play too many decks or too many games with this version of the deck uh i you know had my deck changed to 66 played one game in one so perfect record played that but i've been trying different variations of steel song for a long time these are the older ones uh, and things like that i have a couple more as well 
but it's a work in progress. The metagame shifts and what's good or not good will change uh, on a weekly or even you know daily basis. And, and that's just how Pixelborn and how uh, you know, Larkana does work. It It's an ever-changing game. So I move myself all the way up here again for uh, the games we're about to play. But here we go. Finding a worthy opponent. It's pretty hard to find those these days, you know. No, but thanks everyone for hanging out with me here. I'm going to play a couple games and just the best of ones get some stuff out there see how the mulligans you know would work i didn't get to stream the uh 2k like i would normally want to i streamed day one of it so if you want to you can find that here on uh, on my twitch page at bd candy 7 same place for for this but you know, different name um but yeah if you want to see that uh one card i never mulligan in any circumstances ariel pretty much i i it's hard to imagine such a way um I'm tempted to keep uh, pairing shift lines early on, especially when going first. So I don't mind this being ink, but I don't really need any of the other cards here. So bare necessity is another card you want to play early unless you want to keep it to be ink specifically. Um, but yeah, uh, this hand's not spectacular. I'm probably not going to be strengthening since I have no one cost characters. So I was going to shift that here and hope to draw a one cost character, a lantern or I don't know, something. Not the greatest hand, but we'll see how it goes. I think a lot of people get caught up in molding specifically for uh, certain pieces, and there's definitely a lot of hands I would keep which don't have um, any one costs that are that are that are too great, and cards that just you know are pretty medium. I'm pretty sure we're going to be whole new worlding uh, this game on turn four, so this tragic hero is tragically not going to be of much use to us. And I'm playing these just as, as they come. I'm not you know guaranteeing I'm going to win all the games you're going to see. I don't really enjoy that where you know that the only ones you ever see on, on YouTube are the ones where they win everything. And that's just kind of kind of lame because not every deck's perfect. And if that's bad content, then I guess I'm bad at making content. <laughs> but I like to, to show people what, what, it, what it can be really like. And maybe you disagree with some of the cards or, that are in my deck, some of the cards that you know, I, I've played. Um, and, you know, you want to message me in the comments there what you'd like to see or otherwise. But okay. This hand uh, is not really coming together, but you know it's unlikely they can kill this. They can Pinocchio it, and then I'm in, in big, big trouble if they have Pinocchio here. But uh, you know what are you gonna do? If they Pinocchio this, I would probably just ink and pass and uh, cry, cry on the inside a lot. But maybe they'll have Pinocchio. Uh, uh, tap this one too. Tap this one too, please. We'll see. All right, there's a fox, interesting. All right, that is not a Pinocchio, so I'm happy. I don't think there's much of a world I want to grab your sword here instead of doing something else, but I will play this out uh, to allow myself to draw into a Cinderella that uh, can connect with this, this Cindy here. If I hold new world here, my Ariel is gonna die more than likely, um, but that's fine. I kind of just have to catch up at this point because my hand was so bad, but Giving me the option to um, ink and play potentially a two drop would have been, or not two drop, it, just be able to play something else here would have been nice, but we have a bunch of lanterns. That's not great. Uh, I played at a, a 1k tournament today and it didn't go so well because my whole new worlds were a lot of, actually the first game I played, I whole new world it in the board where I needed to hit like a queen or a, or a Robin Hood or a Cindy or a Tinkerbell. And I drew three lanterns and three more home worlds, and that that was that was it. And like a and like a, a Zeus, and I need to do something else, but it didn't really work out. And uh, yeah, that happens. Um, kind of live and die by the wheel here. So let's actually hold off on on playing this out here. I'm gonna ink it, play another lantern, and play a Robin Hood next turn. So not the greatest start to this little series here, but what can you do? What they discard here? They discard some Tremaines, okay, and a friend. Their hand was pretty good. They had a one, two, three. Could deal with most things there, and yeah, it's not unfortunate when you're digging for the third whole new world on on the early turns of the game. But hey, what can you do? Definitely still a winnable game, but it's gonna be tight. Well, there's the let's see, just you gotta know what you, you gotta know what you need to find, and and when you can ask for it, it's it's nice too. So we're gonna go. Essentially, we have functionally six here, and this is minus one to the count of casting a. a character out so always be sure to do your lantern math ahead of time 
you should always do the math and then make your play versus the other way around because then you might realize that you could have done something that would have been slightly better and you know i could have that turn instead of playing the cinderella's ink maybe inked a robin hood not played a lantern and played both cindy and robin hood but i think that's worse than developing the lantern because i'm right now in catch-up mode a bit um i'm lucky that i was going first this game and i didn't have i, I don't have to play against a tremaine not tremaine a medusa this turn because that would have been pretty horrific as they just played their fifth ink here but you know We're winning the decking war, of course, being 66 cards. Something that didn't come up too often in the tournament. I think one time I actually did deck out my opponent playing Ruby Sapphire, and I won with five cards in my deck and all four wheels. So it actually did win me a game having that many extra cards, probably roughly three extra cards in my normally starting deck would be, but three, six, you know, it's in, it's in the range there. All right. This hand is a... Uh, this board is pretty big, hard to clear without a Tinkerbell, but uh, hey, what can you do? All right, so I did mention, again, that I would like a Tinkerbell just now to kind of make things work. I'm not going to be able to afford to play this out. The question is if I sing this before Whole New Worlding, um, and if so, what do I target with it? Because right now, um, I can sing, maybe hit here. That makes that a grab your sword drawn, kills everything. I think that's my best bet. I have two of those, and it also makes that Tinkerbell take two of these out, so I think that's where I'd want to put this point, or two points of damage. All right. Not going to do it enough for me, and I don't really want to play this out, even though I could still play all the characters I would want to play. Uh, having eight means I can aerial into a grab your sword manually, so it's always good to count and make sure you do things before or after you'd want to do certain other plays. So there's a Tink. And again, I can just tank here, and there's the chance I could also aerial into a grab your sword is another play I could consider. It just depends on how far behind I feel like I am. Uh, if that's better than playing Lantern, Tinkerbell, Robin Hood. Um, I think I can afford to do that and not have to bank on the aerial into uh, grab your sword. Because if I miss there, I'm, I can't even Tinkerbell. So that, that'd be kind of a big miss. I'm getting close to my timer. Trying to go quick, but sometimes talking and timers don't really go hand in hand. And I could still develop a bit more with this Robin Hood because I can't be prepared here. Um, so here we are. Want to make them discard? No, be prepared down. So we got a big fight ahead of us on be prepared still. But that was our third home world this early on. And you know, 66 card. You'd think they'd be spaced out a little bit more, but not not us. Not us. Not this time. I see what my what my cats are. They were out here a minute ago. Two little you know cats. They're about a year old. Their birthday's in a week. They're almost one. These little devils. They're cute though. They might run around. You might see them in the background. All right. So they're still not able to uh, be prepared. Us here. They can Medusa the Robin Hood. Maybe challenge the Cinderella, and then kind of quest out, or maybe not even quest and just hold out for be prepared the following turn. Um, but I can maybe take the be prepared, so we'll see. But my hand is pretty lackluster if they don't quest or tap their characters for me to put damage on my own, uh, just because I'm out of ways to kind of churn through my deck, which which does come up. Um, I think one of the more common uses of Rapunzel in this deck is actually when I have copies of Storm Rage on, I just shoot my own Robin Hood and heal to draw some cards. Um, and I've I've, almost, I've also used my own Robin Hood and and done that. Uh, there's there's plenty of lines where that that's uh, that's very you know, feasible to do. All right, inking a snake when they're just kind of lore questing. Okay, they have worse cards than snakes, so interesting. That definitely leads me to believe they have a bunch of be prepared effects, so that's pretty good. That clears everything, um, and I can start by this to see what I need to do for the turn. So be prepared. All right, I'm just gonna do my own little. Here we go. Take this be prepared. Their hand's pretty saucy. Uh, two goats yeah two goats so i actually really want to wheel this hand away uh as fast as i can because i can't beat those goats going along let's play this out see what we get storm rage on's pretty good for that rapunzel line i was talking about um and i'm going to try and full clear so to do that i'm going to 
uh, attack here to put damage on it, like I said. Shoot the snake. Heal up here. Okay, that's interesting too. I'm going to just be able to do this here, which is a little bit unfortunate. I can't do everything I want to do. Seeing as I know they have a uh, castle in hand, they're probably just going to Hawkins into here, but maybe they'll do something else instead. I think I'm going to hold off on playing either of these out because, uh, inking anything here, I should say, because I know that they have a castle in hand. And if they be prepared, I really need to take that ability from them to just play Jim and Castle in the same turn. And they'll have a couple more cards down the pipeline where maybe they hit another be prepared. I want to take that, but we'll see. They found one. That's unfortunate. I could have cleared beforehand and done that play. That might have been a mistake. Um, three goats. Okay. Jim, Jim, goat, goat, Medusa. Yeah, that's that's rough. I think I'm think I'm dead. Um, We'll see. I'm gonna play my stuff out. Hope it works out. Cause I can't I can beat all three goats, and that would be I don't know if they've inked one or not, but that's three goats. Oh, they drew another location. Man. The legacy. That's gross. What was the whoops there? Was it better perhaps than to play that? Yeah, I mean I guess I, I do think that's actually better for him to play. Uh, not that out, but um, really need to find a wheel. N nope. All right, no punishment. All right, we are dead. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I think they should play both goats out, mainly because um, that's good. But if I can answer that, like that's something I can answer. We're playing two goats out is is four lore I can't answer, and that one might have been a little bit of a misstep. Um, I don't really want to queue right back into them right away. Hmm. Well, let's see if it works out or not. Maybe we play against the same person, maybe we don't. But we'll play three games, so we'll see how it goes. Maybe I just get crushed a bunch, and you just see that this deck is beatable, and maybe you want to be play something else. But it has its, its strengths and weaknesses, and I think the early game was kind of a little bit too weak for us there. We didn't do anything in turn one or two, and our aerial was basically you know, discarding four cards for both of us and then throwing away the aerial itself. So that was a little bit, you know, not the greatest, but maybe we'll play a game and it doesn't really play that way out against uh, red purple. And my experience is it's a very close matchup, uh, not really determined by play versus draw, but by a lot of other factors. So blue steel Zoolander. Cinderella is a key card, but not one I want in my opener all the time. Okay. This hand's pretty decent. Um, I mean, despite these cards being quite good, the Cinderella's, I'm going to probably have to ink a bunch of things and there's a chance they wheel them. So I'm actually going to keep these. The beast is likely ink. This is a half of a, you know, piece of uh, a hood line. And Cinderella is usually good in some cases. Okay. So two lanterns usually changes a lot of how the games play out. You usually just don't play any one drops when you have two lanterns. You want to have a three. So I really want to find an aerial here. Um, just because you can go turn two lantern, turn three lantern plus three drop. And then you play six drop characters at that point. Six cost. So... It's a pretty good accelerant hand. I will probably match them if they play a hook, just to uh, make it so that I don't... Um, three lanterns. Ugh. I'm not going to play anything here, because I think I need these all as ink, uh, unfortunately, because we're going to fall pretty far behind uh, on the board, and this, this beast has got to carry. All right. Whenever you have a card like Develop Your Brain, don't ink first, because um, he might draw something that's much worse to ink than Captain Hook. Uh, I think he's played a second Develop Your Brain there pretty quickly but just good to note always draw before you do an action if you know that you know you're going to draw cards okay that's actually interesting um i'm going to ink the queens the least likely one i'm still not going to play the cinderella this turn i might play it the following turn but it is something to note to uh that i can play this out but again with three lanterns i still might not even be trying to shift i might just play it out you know, naturally because that's a turn five cinderella either way but we'll see Winnie the Pooh, huh? Okay. Interesting draw there. 
I'm not too keen on playing out the beast in matchups where I can get Zeus. So I'm actually going to ink the beast. And there's a debate for me playing both of these out here. And then kind of going with whichever one survives. But then I'm down whatever ink and I can only play one of them. Hmm. This lets you play it. It lets you use the ink immediately. It's not, um, I'm just play this out. It's not depleted, so you can, uh, he could grab your sword if I played both out, so I didn't want to do that. I didn't know if it was uh, exerted or not, so you couldn't use it, or if it was exactly like Quill. Pretty neat card to play. Kind of like extra Quills. All right, there's a Cannons. So here I can go Robin Hood, Lantern, and then play Robin Hood. All right, again, they probably should have used Popsicle at first before playing Fire the Cannons, even though they were most likely to play Fire the Cannons, just as a good practice. Interesting hand there. Let's go ink this. And I said we have four, five, six. Six minus one is five, so I can do this and then still play my Robin Hood, which I do like better than Beast in matchups where they have Zeus. So I usually will ink a Beast and play a Robin Hood in matchups where they have Zeus's Lightning so that I don't just get completely tempoed out by a, it being able to be sung or just by it being only costing four and that being a, a big swing there. Like Duck Manor, all right. And Captain Hook. So he might be okay with questing. Doesn't look like it. I don't want to play a whole new world here. I want to just develop and probably attack their manor. They're pretty far behind not having a, a singer in play. And even with both of these, they can't take out the uh, Robin Hood. They can you know, attack it and then Zeus is lighting it, which at this point in the game is fine because that's not able to be sung and my Cinderella's in play. So All right, Tinkerbell's fine. They, they could have attacked both of these into this and then Tinkerbell, so I wouldn't draw a card. But they elected not to. Now, if they want to make that trade, I get to draw a card, which always keep in mind, you know, what you're, you're letting your opponent do. Um, as it stands right now, them not being able to do anything is a little rough. Uh, hmm. I'm just going to take out the McDuck Manor, I believe. And I can play out this Grab Your Sword just from hand by inking this. Alternatively, I can just play Grab and attack here. I think that actually might be better. Because now that I cast a song, this lets me eventually trade here and I know they're still gaining some lore there but and now this is vulnerable to Zeus's lightning but they can't Zeus's lightning both of these now and I'll be able to take out the manor. Usually in matchups where both players are playing a whole world decks if you're the one to cast it first you really need to make sure that you're ahead to kind of make it work. All right they must have just missed there on anything relevant and that was that um, kind of managing you know my resources early on by not playing any of the one cost cards until that singular Cindy to try to make it you know a uh, uh, shifted Cindy line was good enough and not playing out the Robin Hood was, was kind of nice to, to make sure I had the ink. All right, let's try and make it a 2-1 here. But yeah, as you can see, it has some strong uh, strengths and some weaknesses. Consistency can be a thing, but having utility, you know, more cards you can draw too, just because your deck being able to do more than the normal amount of things that your deck otherwise could with more than 60 cards is nice. So, I don't know. I certainly have to worry about decking more if you're playing less than 66 cards or 64 cards or however many. That's the that's the next meme, is that 66 cards is order 66, and then if you're playing 64 cards, you're playing Nintendo, Nintendo 64. So pick your, pick your meme, you know. Got another opponent here. All right, cool. We got a nice spread of matchups. We got Ruby Amethyst, we had Blue Steel, and now we have uh, Emerald Amethyst. All right, and we get to go first here. Nice little hand. Lantern's great. Beast is very good in this kind of matchup. Uh, I'm going to just get rid of the Grab Your Sword and I think maybe a Benja. I'm going to keep these, and I'm keeping a Benja not because it has targets, but because I want something to ink, and it's not good to draw later in the game. And that's why I'm considering keeping a second one, in all honesty. Uh, and the main other reason is I don't want to draw multiple songs that I can't ink uh, just to dodge their their uh, Ursula. So let's get rid of two just to be a little bit. What's going on, little Wainer? Yeah. Cat's, cat's giving me the business right now. He's like, hey, pet me, pet me. Let us uh, play out. I'm actually going to play the Robin Hood here. Um, the reason being, I need to play Robin Hood and not play anything at all. I'm actually leaning towards not playing anything at all. The reason being is because some of the Ruby Amethyst decks are playing, uh, they're playing Rafiki and Pinocchio. And I don't want to... Um, 
give them the opportunity to Pinocchio on on turn two if they played a Rafiki on turn one. I'm fine with waiting till this turn to play the Cinderella. I'm not missing out on much. I wouldn't really quest onto this board. I could. Um, I wouldn't do it onto against three ink though because of both Merlin Crab and uh, Fox Mim. But see, they had a Rafiki that they chose then to play this over. So up oh, swinging a miss. Got rid of our songs and kept some cards to ink that weren't songs. So that's something to always keep in mind. That just feels dirty. That's always dirty. I like to give the greetings there. So I do this first because I don't know what I want to ink here and what I want to do with the rest of my turn. So again, before even inking, I want to play this out in case I hit a bare necessities, I just want to ink. I missed entirely. A little unfortunate, but that's going to be okay here. And this not being a matchup with Zeus's lightning, or along came Zeus, I like to call it, uh, I'm fine with playing out the beast over the Robin Hood. Now this does leave me open to get Mim Foxed. That is something to be aware of this play. I could have not played this play, but I think getting the Curse Mark book off the board and not losing out a card, the card I'm going to lose out on is the Cinderella, more so than the... Oh, they missed a lore there. Uh, instead of having to discard a card, I lost the Cinderella, which is worse, I think, but at this point of the game, I think we're going to be okay. Let's get rid of the Cinderella. A uh, little bit too costly here, even though we're going to be questing, and Tinkerbell's going to have a lot of utility. Don't really want to trade. I know that they can uh, pick this up and make it so I can never trade, or they can stick a friends with this. I'm kind of okay with those lines, and making that decision that kind of ahead of time that I'm okay with that. I want to keep this in play to potentially draw into you know, a whole new world and, and kind of go off from there. If they had made a more uh, greedy line, like drawing cards there, which they still might do. They actually might be thinking about using... Uh, Mother Knows Best on my Beast, which would be interesting. Or what just what to ink, which that one would have hit, you know. They are Mother Knows Best my Beast. That's all fine with me. Alright, picking up the Mim here. Eh, it's a little awkward there, because I would have liked to draw something else to ink. Because I still do want to ink this turn, uh, and I'm going to, uh, even though it is a very, you know, valuable card in this matchup. I don't feel like I need to not ink yet. And I know they have a fox, so there's no reason to sing this to kill the Mim uh, snake. Okay. Kind of just grinding through there, hoping this beast carries us, and that's really one of the one of the times that the beast shines as much as it does is this matchup. Ooh, inking a fox. They must not have anything else to really do, and that wasn't a bad draw. It wasn't exceedingly awesome, but it wasn't bad. So... Let's see what we want to do here. I kind of want to help control the board a little bit. Um, I could go really hard and like kill this with lightning, use this to sting lightning here and attack this here, discard the queen or the grab. That makes it so they had to have a rush character, like a fox uh, again to, to deal with the board. That might be the plan. It, like, it's a full clear and they have to have specifically another fox, which they just have inked and a character to play to deal just damage to the beast. That, that seems okay to me. I guess actually instead of uh, using the um, aerial to challenge, I can just use it to sing this thing. I don't know if this is right. It lets me just kind of play stuff out. Oop, it's going rebooting. Let's replay my queen out instead of discarding anything. And keeps this at three health. Hi, little kitten. What are you doing? All right. Merlin Goat. Yeah, their hand's a little clunky now. Their hands, their deck has a lot of three ofs, or three cost carrot cards, and it really kind of lines up at some point pretty awkwardly. All right, let's... Um, Yeah, let's just play this out here. I still want to keep my beast healthy. And if I they didn't show that they had the ability to challenge that before, I want to keep this healthy and just kind of leave this here. Now with the Tinkerbell out, the whole game plan kind of fumbles. Tinkerbell is one of the best cards against them. And even though I had to ink one earlier, we still have a, a few more in the deck. And leaving a beast unchecked for a bit is really, really rough for them. The Amber, sorry, the Emerald Amethyst decks is, is a very strong choice. I think it's just... A little lacking against some of the steel decks, uh, Tinkerbell specifically as a card. You know, they don't really have any removal, so they have to bounce your thing or have you, you know, Pinocchio. They 
Pinocchio tap it and maybe have a Rafiki plus a crab to kill it. And it, it's a really problematic card. Why I think Pinocchio is so good uh, in these decks, because it's a repeatable way with Mim, Snake, and Fox to answer cards like Tinkerbell through through combat without letting them be able to do something else with it. Another Beast Bounce, sure, sure. Okay, that's fine with me. I'm gonna just see what they had going on. There's a castle. And we know how they have a fox in hand. Fox, I'm gonna quest with this against. I'm gonna ink this here. Um, sorry, get the ball rolling. And it's just fox now versus you know what we got going on. And they do have a you know the same amount of ink technically with this. Uh, but yeah, interesting. I might have quested with this and picked it up because it's essentially drawing the same card except you get to redevelop this card and keep this in hand to potentially ink. I think that was a little bit of a misstep. You're seeing the same amount of cards for the same cost, except you get to use this extra ink right here and have this in your hand. But it doesn't seem to be too bad. All right, grabbing that. I'm just gonna clear their board. Um, yep. I have to sing this though. It's fine, doesn't really matter which one I do it with. Just keep on keeping on, you know. The longer their board stays clear, it's just going to be better and better for me. And I know they have a uh, rabbit in hand, so that's going to eat up a good amount of their ink. Um, and that could be something they have in play. And that wouldn't have gotten cleared by my grab your sword just then. So as you can see, I think that's why I'd rather have that, that going, ooh, more Rafikis. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to hang tight here. This also lets me play a little bit of offense, and this is just another singer. So let's just flood the board. They can't really answer a bunch of them. Two of my three grabs are gone, but as long as this is in play, it's hard for them to deal with, uh, to, to, to quest effectively. I don't want to throw away the queen just yet into this, because if they challenge it and then pick it up, that's pretty bad tempo for me. I kind of lose out on a bit. Um, but now it's going to be a race, and I'm going to start questing this turn, I believe, depending on what I draw. If I draw two blanks, that could be rough, but we're not going to draw blanks. Come on. Uh, I'm okay with singing off, off this. Almost double clicked. Um, it's a fine exchange for me here, and I don't I don't mind too much. This is a card I don't mind losing in combat. I'm gonna get rid of this followers here. I don't want them drawing more cards, and yeah, let's do that. And you know what? I'm gonna quest at this point. Next turn, I'm just gonna turn everything sideways. Maybe this was the turn for it, but I think this is the most conservative of lines to take. And I don't mind being a little conservative when I feel like I'm ahead. All right, the Junior Mim to bounce, and here comes the Merlin, okay. They, again, can't really quest against the, uh, the Tinkerbell, and losing the Cinderella is not really that big of a deal. Again, them having something tapped means that my Cinderella, or my Tinkerbell can shoot down maybe a Curse Merfolk they play, or, or something like that, but... All right, and... Yeah, a whole new world's an easy way for me to lose this game. So I can't clear anything with this, but it's the same thing as me questing is challenging that because this card has that extra, you know, wind banishing, gain lore text. So let's just turn everything sideways and play our thread out. Whole new world, you know, is nice, but not needed here. Um, as you can see, it's pretty hard for them to deal with some of these characters in Steel, and that's why Steel is very good uh, in the metagame. It, it just lets you play this more controlling game while also being proactive against th some of the, the more controlling decks, just with your threats also being some answers to to some weenies that come out of these these more aggressive decks like like amber uh like emerald amethyst boy these names are are eventually going to stick i promise one day i'll have no issue saying all the color combinations names but it is not this day and you can balance all the things you want but my characters are just a little bit out of reach here they're going to be nice let me see my top card they at least cleared one but one of the benefits of this deck and how it runs is your characters are pretty pretty beefy. Oh, I want to play my Surfer. <laughs> Not necessary, but there you go. So we lost two Ruby Am uh, Amber, Ruby Amethyst um, beat Blue Steel and Emerald Amethyst. As you can see, it has varying matchups. Sometimes play draw, sometimes what you draw specifically, and definitely cutting down to 60 cards will increase the likelihood of drawing cards that are... Uh, you know, more relevant in the matchups if that's matchups you want to focus on. What it's going to be cut-wise, I don't know. Uh, you know, if we see a lot of the items decks kind of diminish popularity a bit, which is going to be hard because almost every deck has some number of items. Benja might lose some of its value. Bare Necessities is really good against certain types of decks too. Stitch 
and Cindy and Zeus's and grab your swords and even the fourth copies of Queens. It's all really up in the air as to, to what's correct in this deck. And you, you can kind of customize it any way you want. And that's one of the big appeals for me playing the deck and why I've liked playing it over the, the past month or so, especially in set three. But thanks everyone for tuning in. Hope you guys uh, got some information out of this like I did. Uh, you know, playing games is the best way to learn. And uh, the more you do it, the, the better off you'll be. So thanks everyone for tuning in. See you guys all next time.